As is tradition this time of year, AMD has released a new driver package filled to the brim with goodies for your AMD powered gaming PC. The Radeon Software Adrenaline 2020 edition is available from the day this vid goes live and introduces features such as integer scaling, a new and improved UI, a faster installer and improvements to Radeon anti-lag. But enough about all that, today we're focusing on Radeon Boost, a brand new feature the Red Team's introducing into its driver package to increase frame rates through clever resolution scaling. So could this new feature be a godsend for low power APUs and graphics cards trying their best to get by? We're going to find out. Described by AMD as Radeon Chill's evil twin, Radeon Boost is a motion-based resolution tech that will dynamically scale your resolution during fast motion in-game. The kind of mouse flicks and turns you'll run into a lot in first-person shooters, for example. Radeon Boost will reduce your overall resolution on a linear scale, down to 50% max, during periods of rapid movement. In doing so, it will increase overall performance and send your FPS skyrocketing. But fear not, naysayers, the red team claims Boost is imperceptible to the human eye, and that you won't even notice the change in resolution. Or at least that's what we can expect from its new feature, so let's put all of that to the test. Radeon Boost can be enabled from within the shiny new Radeon software UI, included with the Adrenaline 2020 package. Just download the latest drivers for your red team card, and you're halfway there. Once installed, head to the graphics settings from the settings wheel in the top right. Select the custom profile to allow for granular changes to said settings, and enable Radeon Boost below. There's also a slider to control minimum resolution to get the balance between performance and fidelity just right on your machine. There's no need for Navi either. AMD is touting the feature across its 400 series graphics cards and newer, including Raven Ridge and newer APUs. It's these low power Vega chips that we suspect will benefit most of all from Boost. Also bear in mind that Radeon Boost is initially supported in Overwatch, PUBG, Borderlands 3, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Destiny 2, GTA 5, and Call of Duty World War 2. Kind of ran out of fingers, can't really be bothered. AMD tells us that it's an entirely homebrew affair with zero involvement on any game dev's part, but it has promised to add the latest and greatest titles to Boost's roster as and when the company can get around to it, so we're hoping to see that list expand in the new year. AMD claims an average 23% performance increase on an RX 590 at 1440p with Radeon Boost with little to no perceptible change in image quality. We're going to put that to the test in Overwatch, which by AMD's numbers is the most receptive to Boost dynamic scaling. For today's testing, we'll be opting for the Radeon RX 5700 XT, an AMD Ryzen 9 3950X, a 16 core monster, 16 GB of 3600 MHz RAM, and MSI's godlike X570 board. Also, we'll be enabling Radeon Boost with minimum resolution set to 50%. For our benchmark, we ran three runs across Overwatch's training grounds at 1440p, epic settings, and averaged the results. Let's take a look at how it all shakes out. With 2019's 19.12.1 drivers, we were able to hit around 158 FPS on average, with a 99th percentile minimum of 131. Shifting to the latest drivers, 19.12.2, but leaving Radeon Boost disabled, we saw a slight uptick in FPS, a couple of frames here or there. Not too bad for a simple driver update. But those moderate gains driver to driver were vastly overshadowed by Radeon Boost, which when enabled in the driver settings, bumped our average FPS from 160 to 194. That's a 21% increase. Minimum frame times were on par or thereabouts with those posted without Radeon Boost enabled. How often you'll max out Radeon Boost is entirely dependent on your choice of character and playstyle evidenced by the indicator in the top left of the screen when the feature is enabled. The more erratic you are with your movements, the more you'll notice these four dots appear, and the greater the improvement on your frame rate. But in our experience, the dynamic resolution scaling caused minimal visual degradation, even with our exaggerated movements in game. There's certainly some clarity lost in the process, which you can see in this screenshot taken from when our APU system crashed, which we suspect had something to do with our pre-release drivers. But with faster performance all round, we're pleased with the results Radeon Boost delivers. Even if its cost is a slight, not all that noticeable drop in resolution some of the time. It's worth turning on if you're struggling to hit a steady FPS worth your gaming panel, that's for sure. One thing to note however, our 4K Philips panel maxes out at 60Hz, 
potentially blanketing any resolution drops in a thick layer of fast motion fuzz. We suspect these may be a little more noticeable on, say, a 240Hz monitor able to keep pace. But we'd love to hear how you get on with Radeon Boost in the comments below, so give it a whirl and let us know. While you're there, hand us that like, subscribe, you know the drill. Also check back on PCGamesN.com if you want an in-depth look into the many new features coming to Radeon Software Adrenaline Edition 2020. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.